Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to the Devore Wild Fam. I am just sitting here having some coffee with my mom who refuses to be on the video because she doesn't have her face on. <laughs> so, uh, you might see her in about four hours. That's about how long it takes her to it takes, her, it takes her a really long time to get ready, but we're just sitting here at the table having coffee. I'm just teasing. She gets ready pretty fast. She gets ready really slow. So today we are just hanging out. We were going to go have breakfast together or do something, but my oldest is not feeling well. She's sick, so... Probably just gonna be staying home. She's still asleep, so I have to wait and see how she is feeling. But um, I've had a good time with my mom. We on Saturday we went out to lunch and we did some shopping. Um, had hamburgers. You guys saw the hamburgers. What else? We had tacos last night. Um, what else did we have? What did we have the other night. I think one night we just had leftovers because there was a ton of stew left and hamburgers left. Um, <coughs> Just been chatting the other night. We watched Splash. Who remembers that movie with Daryl Hannah and Tom Hanks? <laughs> the movie's so ridiculous. I remember thinking how cool that movie was when I was little, and like now it's like <laughs> it's just dumb. But anyways, it was <laughs> it was fun to watch. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. Um, we started to watch Big, but we got tired. We've been snacking on drumsticks. My mom's bought drumsticks for everybody, like Cheers. ice cream chips. Um, lots of junk food. I'm feeling really crappy with all the junk and all the sitting, but you know, sometimes that we're having fun. She's saying we're having fun. Sometimes you just need that. You just need to have some lazy days and reconnect with people and that part's been really nice. And we are having coffee together right now. Here, put your cup up, mom. I can at least see your hand. There's <laughs> But I'm not, I'm not allowed to show her face, so I am I'm respecting that. Cause she's gotta go she's gotta go groom. <laughs> who who on here can believe that my mom is 71? She doesn't <laughs> She doesn't look it, does she? She doesn't. Anyway, so today actually what I wanted to talk about, I thought it would be neat since we are approaching Valentine's Day and it's all about love. I wasn't I was gonna do something about me and Adam, but I thought I might still do that on Valentine's Day, but I thought it would be fun to talk about my kids and their birth story. I was trying to get my mom to talk about her birth story with my sister and me, but she's not really comfortable on camera, so I don't know if she if she's saying no. <laughs> I know I came out in 30 minutes. My mom had both me and my sister um, naturally. Well, she had epidurals, but naturally um and for me i had six c-sections so i'm gonna enjoy this coffee with my mom then i'll tell you about my pregnancies and births okay so i've got the wash going so i will have to stop the video when the washing machine gets too loud but i made the cranberry chicken for my mom so i only used three pieces of chicken um, because we still have a ton of leftover taco meat and the kids are probably going to want to eat tacos or nachos or something. So, but if they want this, they can have it. But I did just three pieces of chicken, one can of cranberry sauce, and one packet of Lipton onion soup mix and some garlic and onion powder. And then later when that's closer to uh, being done, like an hour before it's done, I'll add some frozen green beans to it. I added onion last time, but my mom doesn't really like onion that much, so I'm going to leave it out. And I'll serve it with some mashed potatoes. I still love my living room. It's so pretty. Okay, I have been drinking so much coffee since my mom has been here. I'm like shaken. I should probably not drink this. And plus, she was saying something about going out back to, she really liked that Perkins Cafe. So we might go back there today. <laughs> and she's been paying for she probably paid for breakfast that day, she paid for lunch the other day, she bought drumsticks, she wants to pay for breakfast today. I'm like, yes, I am getting spoiled, but I'm like, maybe I shouldn't drink this coffee and wait till if we go out to eat. Anyway, I wanted to talk about birth, <laughs> pregnancy, um, because like I said, it's close to Valentine's Day and 
I love my kids. So I thought that'd be something fun to share that you guys don't really know about me. You know I have six kids. I have seven. I do have a stepson. He is 20. That is from a previous Adam's first marriage. Okay, so I have had seven pregnancies, six children. All of my children were born via cesarean. And I had a hysterectomy. Okay, so let's get started. It's gonna be a longer video because I talk too much, but I'll, I'll try to make each kid short and sweet. I thought maybe I'll do segments. So maybe the, today I'll just talk about Allie and then do each kid a different day. What do you think? Okay, so growing up, I always wanted to be a mom. I didn't really, oh, I didn't really play with dolls and like Barbies. I was more of a tomboy. I liked being outside on my bike and stuff. But I would play with my. I had a friend during childhood, and we'd play these games where we were we were moms, and we'd be on these adventures with our kids, and we'd make up names for our kids, and <clears throat> the babies were. Like the dolls that I did have were outside with me. And so I remember thinking when I was little, I always wanted to name my little girl Tina. Like I remember being little liking that name. And Matt, Maddie for a boy, like Matthew. I just, I don't know, that sticks in my head. Anyways, then I, you know, got older and my teen years, I was, I thought I was going to be like a famous singer. <laughs> And then at one point I wanted to train dolphins at SeaWorld and I was like, I don't ever want to have kids, but I still like secretly, like I didn't want my friends to know, I still would reread the Little House on the Prairie books and I just loved that whole homemaking vibe. Um, but you know, as a teenager, that's not cool to admit. So <laughs> I, they didn't offer home economics when I was in high school. I did take child development and I loved child development and I babysat a lot. So I did love kids so that's how i earned money in high school was by babysitting and helping out in our church nursery and stuff so fast forward to my 20s my I worked at a kinder care learning centers which is basically a daycare and i was placed this is before i had any like credits from college or anything they placed me as like an aide in the infant and toddler room which is birth to two years old so once they turn two they go to the two-year-old classroom um, and I really liked it. Like, I just loved the baby room. So I decided to go get all my early childhood education units. So I signed up at the community college where I was living and got all my 12 units that year and then just kept going back to school and just kept getting more. And I was very, very close to my associates, but that's a different story of why I didn't finish college. Maybe one day I will talk about that. Um, I only actually need a few more classes to like be a director of a center, but that is not something I ever wanted to do because <laughs> that's a lot of responsibility. Anyways, I worked in the infant toddler room on and off for 12 years. Um, during the summer, I would work in the school age room too. I really liked the older kids also. Um, I drove the van, like I took them to field trips, I picked the kids up from school, and I also taught the Hooked on Phonics program. So I really liked kids, but in my 20s I was like, had been through a divorce, had gotten with my second husband. That's a whole story too. Yes, I was married. This, yes, Adam is my third husband. Third time's the charm. Um, and I was like, not really sure at that point anymore if I wanted to have kids. I was like 25, you know, I was like, you know, I love working with kids, but also got to go home at, you know, 6.30 at night and do my thing. So what happened was all my friends started getting married and having babies and I was like, oh, you know, maybe I would want that. And then I got pregnant and it was not planned. And when I found out I was pregnant, I got really excited and I was like, okay, I do want this. I do, I do want to have kids. You know, I was, you know, young, I was 25 and you know, I just, you're scared and, but you know, I, I was married by that time to my second husband and. So we were really excited to find out that I was pregnant and about a month later and unfortunately I lost that baby and it devastated me. I, I don't think you really can ever get over a miscarriage because um, that baby was part of me. And I was very sad to lose that baby. And then for some reason after I lost that baby, <clears throat> a lot of it 
um, was due to probably my eating disorder because I didn't know I wasn't trying to get pregnant. So I wasn't, I'm not saying that I caused it. I don't know because um, miscarriages can just happen. But I, I wasn't the healthiest person in my 20s. I was very thin. Like I skip per my periods and stuff. So that probably had a big reason. Anyways, after I miscarried, I could not get pregnant again. They told me to track my periods and my ovulation, but my periods were still, again, all over the place because I just could not get my eating disorder under control and I, I couldn't get pregnant. And then like three and a half years passed and I still wasn't getting pregnant and I was my eating disorder wasn't so bad, but in fact, I'd put on some weight by that point. I just, anyways, I couldn't get pregnant. <laughs> so my ex-husband was Air Force and so we had really good insurance. So we decided to do fertil fertil fertility medication. So they put me on, I think it's called Clomid and there's high chance of like multiple births. And I was like, bring it on. Like at that point I wanted a baby so bad. I was like, I don't even care if I have quadruplets. I just, I just wanted a baby. And I felt like all my friends were getting pregnant around me. And that's really hard when you're trying and you can't and people, you're happy for them, but it's just, it's very difficult to, you want to be happy for somebody but inside you're like dying because you just want to have your own baby to hold and um <clears throat> we'd even thought about adoption <clears throat> but me and my ex are a whole story because we break up get back together and I <laughs> adoption wasn't in the cards and actually we had just gotten back together when um we decided to do the clomid and i was kind of on the fence about it because i was like maybe we should wait to make sure our marriage works before we bring a child into it um but he was about to get out of the military so he's like we ought to use the insurance while we can and he was really wanting a child too so so we ended up doing the clomid and they said sometimes it can take you know a few tries for it to work so he would give me shots in my butt every night and Anyway, it worked the first time and I got pregnant with Allison. And I was over the moon, so happy about it. And her pregnancy was fairly easy. Um, I did put on a ton of weight. I gained 80 pounds with her pregnancy. There goes the washing machine. I did gain 80 pounds. Okay, I think, I think it's done. So, okay, so I'm pregnant with Allie, super excited. My mom was actually there when I found out I was pregnant with her. Um, so my husband was still, and my ex-husband was still in the military at the time, and like a week after I found out that I was pregnant, um, he was deployed for a couple months. It was his last deployment before he got out of the Air Force, and that sucked because I started bleeding, and all I could think about was I bled with my last miscarriage so I thought that's what was happening again so I took myself to the hospital and they did an ultrasound and her heartbeat was strong and <clears throat> I, could, I could see her I didn't know what she was yet but <clears throat> that was my first little ultrasound she was just like a little gummy bear <laughs> um, so everything was good um, and we moved to um, North Carolina when he got out and my, the majority of my pregnancy was in North Carolina where my ex-husband's family is from and I remember just being really hot <laughs> because she was due in July, the end of July, so it was humid. I was there until May, so it wasn't humid, humid. Like I wasn't there for the butt of the summer, but it is, I'm from California, so I was not used to Southern weather. But I don't know, I was just excited. I watched a lot of Baby Story on TLC and I read the What to Expect When You're Expecting books and I just daydreamed and had, had her name planned, um, had or his name planned. Um, we found out she was a girl on St. Patrick's Day. I was so excited. And right away I knew she was Allison Page. Um, I had like th three baby showers. I had one baby shower. Um, in California with my family before two baby showers in California I had one in Southern California with my family before we moved and one in Northern California with all of our friends that I that I worked with and Jonathan's friends um, before we before we moved to North Carolina and then we had one in North Carolina because we got involved in the little church there 
And then of course his mom and grandmother and sister um, had was giving us stuff too. So Allie, like out of all the kids I had, she had the most things. Like everything was brand new. <laughs> she had the crib and the matching crib set and the swing and the walker and the matching high chair. Like everything was ocean themed and it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy how many like things she had and the amount of clothes she had and oh my gosh, she had a lot of stuff. Um, then living around Memorial Day, I remember my husband wanting to go to my ex-husband, wanting to go to AMP school to get his AMP license for, he was a aircraft mechanic in the Air Force and he wanted to do that in the civilian world, but he had to go to school like a six week course, I think, or eight week course in Georgia. So we were only renting this little place in North Carolina. So we decided that I would move in with my mom in Southern California and he would go to Georgia and go to school and he would fly out a couple weeks before Allison was due and that is what happened I moved in with my mom to this little tiny apartment and spent the last of my pregnancy in Southern California in dry heat <laughs> and he ended up flying back it was only like three days before she was born I was due July 27th and I had her July 29th um, Allie is the only pregnancy I had where I got really swollen, like my feet got really swollen. I just retained a lot of water. Plus I gained that 80 pounds too. Like I just ate like pregnancy was my excuse to just eat anything and everything I wanted. Um, so the night that she was born, we were actually staying up at my dad's. Um, he lives in Southern California as well. He, this is before he had remarried. He had his own little place up in the hills and I got up to use the restroom and did you know, peed and was walking back to the bed and I felt like I was peeing. <laughs> I was like, okay, I just peed. Like what the heck's going on? And I went back to the bathroom and tried to pee some more and nothing and got back up and when I was walking back to the bed, I happened to look down at the sheets and I don't know how I didn't feel the wetness, but there was this huge like spot, like wet spot on the bed. And then it dawned on me, oh, like my water must have broken. So I woke up my ex and I was like, you know what, my water broke. I'm like, we have to go to my mom's because <laughs> I wanted to take a shower because my dad had a really old house and the shower didn't have, it was just like a stall. There was nowhere to put my leg up to shave my legs and I was too big to bend down and shave. And there was no bathtub. And I really wanted to shave. Like it's like all I could think about how to get to my mom's house because I needed to shave my legs. <laughs> so we woke up my dad and told him and so we drove to my mom's. This is all like four o'clock in the morning. I still wasn't having contractions. I was just, my water was just leaking took a shower shaved my legs and was ready to go to the hospital and I remember like driving to the hospital in my dad's truck thinking oh my gosh like the next time I'm in a car I'm gonna be a mother like I'll have a little baby with me I was very excited um we were on I was on Medi-Cal at the time which is you know like government insurance so I was kind of bummed because the doctors I had in North Carolina like the group that I was seeing there were, were awesome like I really liked that group of doctors and the doctor I had in Southern California wasn't the greatest but that's who would take our insurance <clears throat> so I don't know Allie was actually born at the same hospital I was born at so we get to the hospital and it's probably like 6 6 6 30 by this time and I'm just starting to have contractions but they were like nothing major I just like that kind of like period cramps like that tight feeling um so they hooked me up to the monitors and all that good stuff and I don't even remember like my sister coming like I remember her being there but I don't remember like what time she got there but it seemed like all of a sudden my mom and my dad and my sister and my ex and everybody was in the room and they had me hooked up to the monitors and I remember I remember my sister saying oh look you're having a contraction like you could see it on the little monitor and then the doctor came in and he checked me and then I remember him whispering to the, the, the nurses and I was like, what's going on? And they're, I can't remember everything, but I just remember them saying, oh, you have a fever and it's high and you have uh, preeclampsia, like that toxemia. 
and I was like, what? Like, I knew I was swollen. Like, I was really swollen, but I did not feel sick. Like, I didn't feel like I had a fever, <laughs> but he was like, no, we have to get you into surgery right now. We don't have any time to waste. It's an emergency. And I was like, what the heck is happening? And my sister, who had her first baby there, ended up with the C-section there also, was like, I don't think you have toxemia, please. She was like telling me, please, Becky, get a second opinion. This hospital is known for doing unnecessary C-sections. And I really wish that I would have listened to my sister, but I was a new mom and I was scared. And you know, you're, I was taught to, I was brought up to believe that the doctors know best. And I was like, no, to my sister, I'm like, no, they know what we're talking about and something must be wrong. And I don't want something to happen to the baby. And so I let them wheel me off to surgery and they just kept saying like, it's an emergency, it's an emergency. Like we can't even wait for her husband. Like, because they were trying to like get him like the scrubs and everything and everything just happened really really fast and I just remember laying on the table and they didn't put me under and I remember my ex walking in and <laughs> the way the operating room was my feet faced the door so when he walked in he had to pass all of me <laughs> and they had already started cutting me open and by the time he got to my head he was very pale and I remember asking him like are you okay and he was like I'm, I'm not but I'm going to be like because he looked and I don't think he liked what he saw <laughs> I remember being more worried about him like for a minute than I was about anything else and then I started worrying about the baby but they they got her out really fast they pulled her out she cried and I was like oh my gosh and they brought her over to me and I looked at her sweet little face and I was like oh my gosh I just had a baby <laughs> And it happened so fast and they then I don't remember exactly like cause you know you're coming out of the spinal tap crap and you're just out of it I woke up in the hospital room and Allie was next to me and I really wanted to breastfeed and they were like pushing it like which because I, I told them I wanted to breastfeed I did not want to bottle feed so they kept trying to latch her and she wouldn't latch and I just was shaking because the spinal tap like the medicine like I don't know was having like a kind of reaction to it and I could not stop I was shaking so bad that even my dad was like should we call a nurse like is there something wrong with her and they're like no it's just the stuff wearing off or the anesthesia wearing off and I remember being really really itchy okay there goes the washing machine the washing machine has stopped yelling so I can continue so okay so I've had Allie trying to breastfeed breastfeeding was not working out the way I thought it would <laughs> she did not want to take the boob like at all and I was so sore and just shaking and <sighs> all I wanted to do was like I loved my child and I wanted to hold her and breastfeed but I was like can you please please like let me sleep for one second like let me heal Little did I know, <laughs> that is a big part of motherhood. You don't get to sleep anymore. What's that? I remember like when I first held her, the first thing I wanted to look at was her feet because her foot was constantly jabbed under my rib cage. And I remember like always like doing this, like trying to push her foot down because it would hurt so bad. <laughs> Just little tiny feet. She was exactly eight pounds even just a pretty little thing they put a, like a little pink bow on her little bald head and I will insert pictures afterwards of what she looked like as an infant and I think I am gonna make this a six-part video because otherwise it'll take up too much of my storage space because there's just too much to tell when you have so many kids so I do remember when the nurse came in to change my bandage and because I'd watched so many baby stories in TLC, I knew what cesarean scars should look like. And they took my bandage off and I was like, holy crap, what is that? They had cut me from my belly button all the way down. So when it was supposed to be a bikini cut and even the nurse looked shocked. I'm like, what? And I was stapled. So it looked like Frankenstein. So my stomach was like folded in um, and I was like, what? 
And the nurse is like, that's weird. Like, I haven't seen a cut like that in a long time. Um, because usually when they cut you like that, it is because you have multiples, like twins or triplets, or it's like an extreme emergency and I guess they can get them out faster. And they also did that a lot in like the 60s and 70s. Um, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know why I was cut like that. I didn't know until I had Kennedy. So keep watching these vlogs because you will find out. So I was cut long ways and which made the healing harder, a lot harder, made it harder to sit up. It just made everything super difficult. Um, and plus I, ugh, the scar was so thick and deep. It was just, it was an ugly scar. So, but I, I wanted her so bad. I would do it all over again. I really would. I was so happy to be a mom. Took so many pictures of her. I was just very happy. So <clears throat> I was only in the hospital for two days. Went home <clears throat> and well, we went to my, my dad's house because my mom just had a tiny apartment and it was only one bedroom. So my dad had two bedrooms at his little house and he let us use the master bedroom. And so still tried to breastfeed her. Um, I gave up after four days. <laughs> I was like, I can do it and she's starving and she wasn't. She was getting the good stuff, the colostrum. But I was just a new mom and I was afraid that she wasn't getting enough calories. So I started her on formula because that's what I thought was the best thing to do at that time. And I think that God allows everything to happen for a reason. I was having a really, really hard time healing and I was bleeding a lot. And it really hurt to sit up. So bottle feeding allowed my ex to be able to feed her. And I didn't have a pump or anything like that. I just, anyway, I bottle fed her. I don't make, I'm not sorry about it. It's just, she was a bottle fed baby and she was fine. <laughs> so I was just so excited to have her, just dressing her up those first couple days and showing her off to family, which was actually really hard because it just, my seasick, it hurt so much. <laughs> Um, when she was 11 days old, my ex had gotten a job in Texas, close to Dallas. So we moved to Texas when she was 11 days old. I still had my staples in me like they, <laughs> I was still healing and that was hard. It was hard to, to do that move. We flew, um, he'd already, I don't, it's kind of, that part of my life's kind of a blur, not Allison, but the, the moving and I don't know, he had our stuff already at the new house from North Carolina. I don't know how he did it. Paid movers or something, I have no I have no clue. Um, I just know that when we got to the new house in Texas, our furniture and everything was there and um, he did get busy right away setting up the nursery and everything for me and rearranging furniture. And he was very busy like for three days, hanging up every picture and helping me feed her and do all that good stuff. and. Then he dropped <laughs> the bomb, as I like to call it. He dropped the bomb on me. And because we're only there for three days, so she was barely two weeks old. And he told me that the job there wasn't working out or it wasn't going to pan out. And he had to take a different job, which he knew about this whole entire time and did not tell me. Um, as an aircraft mechanic for a different company, but he would have to work 20 days out of the month in Baltimore and we were in near Dallas, Texas, and be home for 10 days. And that was hard. That was so incredibly hard because I was a new mom with this new little baby in a new town where I didn't know anybody. And the first few months that he left, he took the car. I still don't understand why he took the car. <laughs> he should have like got a taxi or something, but he took the car so I had no means of transportation and I remember being so worried that if something happened I didn't have a way to get her to the doctor I didn't even know where the doctors were I didn't know where anything was like I had to wait for him to come home in this 10 days to like take me to Walmart to get diapers and whatnot and I, it was just it was hard I never ran out of diapers or formula but one time it got it got really close because he ended up working three extra days and I was like oh my gosh 
that's when I told him, you cannot take the car anymore. I will learn my way around, like get a ride or take a, take a cab because A, we're paying for long-term parking for our car to sit there when I could be using it. It was just stupid. So after that time when I almost ran out of like diapers, like I think I had one diaper left and like one bottle, like a formula left before he came home. So I didn't want to be put in that predicament again. So we lived there for six months and I was so lonely. Oh my gosh, I was so lonely. I remember my mom coming to visit for Christmas and it was the first time she had seen Allie since, since birth and she was like crying at how beautiful she was. And I, I remember changing her outfits like five times a day and taking a ton of pictures because we had nowhere to go and like she had all these new clothes and I didn't have anybody to show her off to. It was just, it was really, it was hard. I was so alone. Um, but, you know, I got through it. I loved being a mom. She, that's when I had her, that's when I started. She would never sleep in a crib or anything. She had to be sleeping with me because I, she was my comfort. Like she's what I had. And so she slept with me. We co-slept. <laughs> Um, when she was like three months old and he was home for one of the 10 days, I remember going to the doctor to ask about, I went to get a checkup and make sure my scar was healing and all that good stuff. I remember asking about birth control. Um, and he was reading my chart. He's like, oh, you don't need, you don't need birth control. You can't get pregnant on your own. You will have to do the Clomid, again, to, you can't, you don't ovulate by yourself. That's what he told me. And I was like, okay, whatever, I have my baby, I'm not worried. So, cause we weren't really planning on having more kids. Like I was, I was happy with my daughter. I was happy with my one little baby. And God had other plans because when she was five months old, I felt some of the same symptoms that I felt when I was pregnant with her. And I was like, what, am I pregnant? <laughs> and I remember taking a test. We, she was five months old. I had told my ex, I, I'm done. Like I couldn't live there anymore because I was so alone and just isolated. And I said, if, because the job he had, because he traveled, they would pay for, he said, I don't even know if this is true. He said they would pay for us to move wherever we wanted to. So anyway. I told him I, I wanted to move to Southern California. I wanted to be near my family if he was going to be traveling 20 days out of the month. So he wanted to move back to North Carolina and be closer to his family. And I loved his family. I still do. But I was like, I'm very much a mom's girl. And I was like, okay, I want to be with my mom. <laughs> like I wanted my mom. I'm like, if you're going to be gone, I want to be near my mom. So he relented. He was like, okay, like. He was very, I don't want to say totally understanding because, you know, he loves his family too. He wanted his family to be a part of Allison's life. But because he was the one being gone, he decided, okay, we'd move to Southern California. So that's what we did. But the day, the day we were moving, the day we were like leaving to drive to California, um, I took a pregnancy test because I just felt those same symptoms. And it came out negative. And I was like, okay, it's, it's in my head. And I threw it away. <laughs> and we moved to California. And he continued to work 20 days out of the month, home for 10. Um, I didn't get my period. And by that time, like, my, after Allie, like, I mean, my periods were pretty regular. I, you know, I was keeping my food down. I mean, I, my eating disorder was under control at that time. Um, anyway, I decided to just take another test. <laughs> it came out positive and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm pregnant again. And she was like barely five months old. And I remember telling my ex and he was like super excited. He's like, cause he had told me he only wanted one kid and I was okay with that. Cause it just wanted to be so bad. Like I felt blessed to have one baby. And at first I thought he might be upset because he was like, no, just, just one, just one kid, you know? 
and I told him he was like seemed happy like he was excited and he even said like oh I hope this it's a boy like have a, a girl and a boy and then you know then we could be done and so yeah so but I will save that story for the next time but that is my pregnancy and birth story with Allison who is now 15 seems like yesterday there was some really hard times but she was a pretty easy baby I only thing that was hard with her was just I was by myself um, until we moved near my mom and then I had my sister and my mom and like my nieces and nephews and then it, it, it was it was better which I'm glad because after everything that eventually happened um, I needed my family so that is Allie's birth story her c-section story and again keep tuned because I found out when I was pregnant with Kennedy I had the most awesomest doctor with her that I didn't even need that c-section and that doctor actually had a lot of lawsuits against him so <laughs> and he cut my uterus long ways which made it where I could never have v-backs so Allison is beautiful she's my oldest you've all seen her um, everybody says she's um, my mini me um, I think she looks a lot like my ex-husband though too she has his eyes definitely so that is the story of Allison so my mom is still getting ready <laughs> it's been an hour and a half <laughs> I mean I've stopped this video and like done laundry and started dinner and everything but she takes <laughs> uh, she just takes a little while to get to get moving I love her though. I'm so I'm so bummed that she's leaving already tomorrow. It went so so fast. So all right, I am gonna say chicken tendies. I'll probably film a little bit of us before I totally say goodbye. But chicken tendies.